In section three, we turn to the imperfect forms of geminate verbs, starting with the cal imperfect. In the cal imperfect, a geminate root will mark the assimilation of the root consonant only if there is a suffix as well as a prefix. Otherwise, it will simply write the consonant once and give you no indication that the root is geminate. Compare the cal imperfect of katal, which you know from chapter five, with savav in tamam. Starting with the form you know, the cal imperfect of katal is yiktol, tiktol, tiktol, tiktali, ektol, yiktolu, tiktolna, tiktolu, tiktolna, niktol. Note that not all of these forms have a suffix, all have a prefix, but only the second feminine singular, the third person forms, excepting the first common plural, have suffixes as well as prefix, the hirek yod on the second feminine singular, the shurek on the third masculine plural, etc. It is only those forms that will give you the dagesh to hint that you're working with a geminate form. So look at the cal imperfect of savav. Yasov, tasov, tasov, tasobi, asov. Yasobu, tusubena, tasobu, tusubena, nasov. So only in these forms do you have a marking of the gemination by the strong dagesh. And the other forms like yasov, you simply have to realize by knowing your paradigms that that's what a geminate verb looks like in the prefixed imperfect form. Secondly, you'll want to note that there is an alternative way of forming the imperfect. It would show gemination, but it puts the doubling in the first root consonant, even though that's not the geminate consonant. Yesov, tisov, tisov, tisobi, esov. Yesobu, tusubena, tisobu, tusubena, nisov. And then for comparison, the cal imperfect of tamam, yetam, tetam, te tam, te tamni, etam, ye tamu, tutamena, te tamu, tutamena, ne tam. As you can see, these forms are quite different than the form you know from the cal imperfect. For that reason, this first paradigm, the cal imperfect of savav, should be memorized. Four notes. First, if you add an object suffix to the end of any of these imperfect forms, because there is now a suffix present, you should expect the dagesh forte to now appear indicating gemination. Of course, if that geminate letter is guttural, that dagesh cannot appear, but otherwise it will typically appear once an object suffix is added to the verb. Second, in any imperfect form without a suffix, you're going to have no obvious clue that the form you're working with is in fact geminate. You would simply see ya sov, and you would need to know because you know your paradigms that this is the form of savav in the cal imperfect third masculine singular. Third, there are three different vowel patterns possible. You could have comets holum as in savav. You could have hirek holum as in the alternate form of savav. Or you could have tsere patak as in the form of tamam. All of these can occur. And finally, the alternative geminate cal imperfect form, curiously, as you will have noted, looks like a first noon verb. Ye, and then we double the first root letter, yesov, even though, in fact, the root remains savav. When you're parsing a form like this that you would be inclined to think would be first noon, if you look in your lexicon and there is no root beginning with noon that would match the form, then you should consider the possibility that maybe you have a geminate root. 
In general, you're probably understanding just innately then that geminate roots are messy. For that reason, you typically will want to consider other options first, unless you either are dealing with a word you know well from your vocabulary, like savav, or you've ruled out all other options. Look at these two examples. First, 1 Kings 7.15, Vahut shetem esre ama yasov et ha'amud. So begin, and, v, chut, shetem esre ama. Chut is a chord of, followed by the number and the measure, shetem esre, 12, and then ama, cubit. So a chord of 12 cubits, yasov. You'll have to know from your paradigm, Cal imperfect, third masculine singular of savav, even though it gives you no indication that there is a geminate root letter. And then et, marking the definite direct object, ha amud, the, with compensatory lengthening, amud, pillar, a word that begins with a guttural and therefore cannot double. Second, Psalm 114.3, hayam ra'a, Van Yanos Hayadain Yesov Le Achur. So begin He the Yam C followed by Ra A Cal perfect third masculine singular of Ra A the third He verb. Then we have Vayanos. Now in form you will have learned this, it's a Cal narrative, third masculine singular of Nus to flee. Typically, you would expect the stress to be va-yanos, but in this case, what's happened is this form, you'll note, has an athnak under it. It's in pause, and because it's a pausal form, the accent has shifted from the typical place over ya to the more atypical place you see in this form, va-yanos. Ha-vi-yardain, Jordan, Yisov. So now we have the alternate form of the Cal imperfect. It's still a Cal imperfect third masculine singular of Savav. It is just this alternate form that not only doesn't show the third root letter, but then puts the gemination in the first consonant. And then L, Lamed, Ahur to the back. When we turn to the Hifil and Nifal imperfects, again, geminate roots only will give you the Dagesh to show the assimilation of root consonants in forms that have a suffix, the second feminine singular and the third and second plural forms. So in the Cal imperfect paradigm we know well of Katal, we have Yiktol, Tiktol, Tiktol, Tiktali, Ektol. Yiktolu, tiktolna, tiktolu, tiktolna, niktol. Compare now the hifil imperfect and the nifal imperfect of savav. Ya save, ta save, ta save, ta sebi, a save. Ya sebu, tusi bena, ta sebu, tusi bena, na save. And the nifal, yesav, Tisav, Tisav, Tisabi, Esav, Yesabu, Tisabena, Tisabu, Tisabena, Nisav. As you study this paradigm, several notes. First, in geminate roots, the hyphial imperfect will typically follow the comet's sere vowel pattern the exception only being the third and second feminine plural forms. Second, in the nifal imperfect with geminate roots, you'll typically see the hirek patak vowel pattern, except the first common singular, which has the sigol, which you know well from your paradigm form. In the nifals, the noon assimilates as expected. Therefore, when you see ye sav, 
don't be tricked into thinking that this is the equivalent of the alternate form of the Cal imperfect. In Yisav, this gemination, this doubling, is because there's the hidden noon of the nifal prefix, which assimilates, as it always has for nifals. Third, in these forms, if you add an object suffix, that will again trap the geminate letter and cause a doubling to occur. And fourth, if the first letter of a nifal form is a guttural, you should expect compensatory lengthening since it cannot double with a dagesh when the noon assimilates. Two examples. First, Second Chronicles 14.6. Nivne et he'arim ha'ele v'nasev chomal u migdalim. So we begin, nivne, this is a cal cohortative first common plural of bana to build. Note that the cohortative, because we're beginning with noon, so this is first common plural. This is a third hay verb. So let us build et, marking the definite direct object, he, definite article, arim, the cities, he, definite article, plus the demonstrative, so these cities. Remember, the demonstrative acts as an adjective and therefore agrees in gender, number, and definiteness. Let us build these cities, v, na, save. Now we have a simple vav, v, plus a hyphial imperfect, first common plural of savav. As is often the case, note that because there is no suffix, you have no dagesh here to indicate it's a geminate form. Fortunately, it's savav, a form that you will see often and know well from your vocabulary. So v plus hyphial imperfect first common plural. But remember, a simple vav plus an imperfect form following a cohortative is what we call a secondary volative. So translationally, we would say, let us build these cities so that, indicating the second volative, then na save, we may surround, and then we have choma umigdalim, walls and towers. And then the with and the them are inferred from the translation. Second, Ezekiel 1.12. Yehye, Shama, Haruach, La Leket, Ye Leku, Lo Yesabu, Belektan. So we begin with Yehye. This looks like the divine name, but it is not. This is the Cal imperfect third masculine singular of Haya, to be. And it would be Shama there. What is it? Well, Ha, definite article plus Ruach. The spirit would be there. La Leket. This is Lamed plus, as often follows it, an infinitive construct. This is the, fa the Cal infinitive construct of Halak. Remember, irregularly, halak in its infinitive construct loses the hay and then adds a tav. To go, and then we have ye leku, the same verb. This is now the cal imperfect third masculine plural of halak. They would go. So you have to work to get it into an easier English form. Woodenly, and it would be there, the spirit, to go, they would go, in English, and where the spirit went, they went. Then, lo, yesabu, belektan, so not, and then they did not turn. Here we now have the nifal, notice that we have the hirek, of the nifal followed by the doubled first root letter, which hides the noon of the nifal. 
and they would turn not b preposition b plus leket again the cal infinitive construct of halak with on the third masculine plural suffix in their going or as they went as was the case with the perfect verbs in the pl puol hit by l stems the doubling stems geminate verbs if they occur are regular in their form second samuel 22:26 im gibor tamim titamam so im with Gibor, in this case, in an adverbial use, mighty, and tamim, blamelessness. So with the blamelessness, and then the verb, titamam. This is a hit pael, imperfect, second masculine singular, of the root tamam. Note that as is with geminate verbs, in the pl pual hit pael, you see both root letters that are geminate. The prefix, remember, in the imperfect would be tit. Note that this would create a very strange writing with three tavs in a row. And instead of writing all three, we simply get this one written inside that one with a dagesh.